instead of the Ethernet cable. So yeah, I can't believe that just happened. So ignore, uh, ignore the past few attempts at this. This is Sonic the Hedgehog 3 in Sonic Origins. Let's start again and we can watch the introduction video. If it lets us. Oh, it's not going to let us, never mind. Let's just get started anyway. One player. Um, oh no, I wanted to. I'll have to start in slot two, I think. Turned up for the scuffed soundtrack. Well, thankfully, you'll be able to stick around and actually hear it this time. Because I think I'm I'm back. Everything seems to be working okay now. And if I put it like that, then I should be able to read the chat in the corner of the screen. Yeah, thanks for coming along as well, Michael. Really do appreciate it. Uh, I was getting really worried that no one was going to show up the amount of times that I've tried to go live and it hasn't worked. Um, is the game loud enough? I know when I was doing some of my tests that the game seemed a bit quiet compared to my voice. So let me know whether that needs adjusting or not. But it sounds okay in my headphones, but I don't know whether that's the same on Twitch. I think it's going to be a while until we hear the new Michael Jackson... Well, the non-Michael Jackson versions. Which will be really interesting. Because... I can't hear it. Well, let me stand still somewhere. I'll try and fix it. Oh my god, this whole day has been nothing but... Nothing but uh, fixing things. Uh, let's try... Let's try that. Let's try that. How does that sound? Is that better? I don't know whether I'll be able to get back up there now. Or is that too loud on the game? Or is that about right? Whoa, I've never been up there so slow. I wonder how you get to that. Yay, that's good. All fixed, right? I'll swap back over to my game screen now then. Excellent. Oh, how am I supposed to get back up there now? Do I have to get run up? So, one of the things that I mentioned in one of my attempted streams, like an hour ago, that I'm excited to try out in this version of the game, is the improved collision detection. So you can see how Sonic is actually walking directly on the edge of the uh, tiles on the floor. Whereas there used to be kind of a weird gradient that he would go up. That's because this version of the game engine has a new collision detection model. Which sounds really cool, so hopefully that will eliminate a few of the issues with uh, moving around on the stage. Apparently, anyway. We'll see whether that's true or not. I still need to find a better way of getting the chat on the screen, because I can't really see it very well over there. Let's see if I can get it up on here instead. And maybe balance it like that. That might be better. I'll try that. Okay, anyway, carrying on. Right, the other new thing in Sonic 3 and Knuckles are these different little bonus stages in between the checkpoints. There's a few different ones. There's like this pinball style one. There's one that's kind of themed around Sonic 1's special stages. Um, and there's a... What do you call it? A slot machine one as well. So it's pretty cool that you get the chance to get these bonus things. And if you take too long on this stage, then the floor eventually catches up with you and electrocutes you. I don't know what the one-ups do in this version of the game, because there's no lives. So I presume it gives you the coins that you can use in the museum. There's another one. I'm not sure whether these stages actually get more difficult or not. The new engine doesn't quite match. Yeah, I guess some people would have would have trouble with it because it doesn't feel quite right. But it feels good from what I've played so far, but yeah. If you've got muscle memory, then it's probably difficult. Anyway, I think I've got muscle memory from playing this game so much as a kid. 
but we'll see. Another thing that I've heard that's changed between the original version and this version is the fact that the music in these special stages doesn't actually speed up with the gameplay, which sounds really weird. And I don't know whether that's an oversight or whether that was intentional. And uh, I've got to be careful there. When I was doing a test stream earlier today, I messed up on the final one, and I had one orb left to pick up. And then I hit the hit the wall and bounced back onto it. But yeah, it's really weird hearing the music stay the same. <clears throat> As the level itself is getting faster and faster. Yay, there we go. I did it first time that time. Oh, I'm so glad it looks okay now. I've been really struggling getting this stream up and running. Not sure why the chats have disappeared, though. They should be on that box underneath me. I was trying to play around with um, some different stream elements to make the streams a bit more interesting to watch. So hopefully they work okay. And if you've got any suggestions of anything else that I can use to improve the streams in the future, definitely let me know, because I am planning to do this um, at least once a week. I want to play some more interesting games in the future, not just Sonic. There's a load of my, like my favourite games that I've never shown on video or anything that I would love to do live streams of in the future. And I need to let this land on the floor at some point, because I usually just keep bouncing this around forever. I used to know where all the special spots on the floor were to get the boxes to pop out. That's two cool modded versions. One where every level's up on the screen. Oh, I've seen that second one where Sonic changes rings, changes game every time you pick a ring up. That'd be impossible to play. Sounds funny though. Yeah, I don't think I'd be able to cope with that. Does it just play through the Mega Drive games, does it? I wonder if they'll patch this to make the music the way it should be on these stages. <coughs> and which of the classic Sonic Games special stages are your favourites? Do you like the Blue Orbs one? This one? Or do you like the Half Pipe? Or the 3D robot chasing one from Sonic CD? Or the classic... Um, hopefully that turns them into rings. Yeah, it does. Or the, the classic one from Sonic 1 which just spins you around and makes you feel sick. I'd say my favourite is probably... Probably Sonic 2's one. It's probably the most fun to play. And then maybe the one from Sonic CD and then this one. I do like this one though. The original one's just Mega Drive. There's a bunch of different ones now and a Mario version. Yeah, you agree you like the half pipe as well. It's definitely the most fun, I'd say. I do like Blue Spear. Blue Spear? Blue Sphere as well. I don't know what a Blue Spear would be. Maybe the spikes on Sonic's back. I think I'm already noticing the different um, collision detection. Like, even the slightest bump on the floor, you can see Sonic moving to match it. It's kind of cool. Like there, you can see that he's slightly higher up than further down there, whereas on the Mega Drive that would be flat until you actually started going down the hill. So, that's cool. I wonder why... Apparently they had some trouble with the original physics of the game. So I'm not sure what issues they ran into when they were trying to port Sonic 3 and Knuckles. Apparently the levels were more complex and the... Um, the same collision that they used with Sonic 1 and 2 didn't really work. Did you ever lock Sonic and Knuckles onto uh, Sonic 1 on the Mega Drive and then you get unlimited um, orbs, blue orb stages? There's something insane like a million different levels. 
And there, there's a guy on Twitter that's been trying to play through all of them, and he calls himself like the, the Blue Sphere expert or something. But, yeah, I think it's just randomly generated. You have to type in some certain combination when you've got Sonic 1 on. Yeah, I need to find a better way of looking at the chat. I can't really see it very clearly. Anyway. In fact, while that's going, let's see whether I can move the laptop over here. Make it a bit easier to read. Hopefully it doesn't run out of power. Bear with me one second. Okay, I'll try that. Yeah, love the Advance Games 2 and the N-Gage one. Yeah, the N-Gage one is just Sonic Advance 1, isn't it, but squashed. I've got it over there. Maybe I should do a video about the N-Gage at some point in the future. It is uh, quite an interesting device. Not necessarily a good device, but an interesting one at least. Before the iPhone came along and made mobile gaming boring, because everyone just follows the same format now. I don't know why I'm going this way. I just felt like taking the level backwards for some reason. Am I stuck? I don't think I'm meant to be here. Whoops. Can Tails carry me? Yeah, that's weird. I think I just found a part of the game where I'm not supposed to be. I'm starting to play this like Sonic CD where you have to explore everywhere, but... No, you don't need to in this game. I really struggled with Sonic CD on my last on my last stream, if anyone was there for that one. Oh my god, I struggled so much. Finding all the different uh, past symbols. <coughs> Whoa, three special stages in one game. Let's see whether I can do them all. Has anyone else got an N-Gage? Or ever used one? And which version of the N-Gage did you have as well? I've got the QD version, which uh, definitely improved the design a lot from the first one. It doesn't have the same taco shape that everyone loved to make fun of back in the early 2000s. But there's definitely some interesting games for the Engage. There's a lot of console ports for it. Like there's Tomb Raider, there's Tony Hawk, um, Sonic, obviously, Super Monkey Ball. I did show that off in my Monkey Ball retrospective. So there's at least one Engage game that I've actually showed off on YouTube, and it's pretty good actually. It's not as good as the GBA one. Like the frame rate isn't quite there compared to that, but it's not that far off really. And playing something like that on a phone at the time would have been really impressive. Taco phone, you could fit every game onto the SD card. Oh yeah, Red Faction was on it as well. I'd be curious to try that one. I've not actually tried Red Faction on the N-Gage, so it'd be interesting to see how it plays. Is it anything like the PS2 game? Or is it a completely separate one? It even has an Elder Scrolls game, doesn't it? Which I think is really expensive now. But yeah, that, I don't know whether to call it a console or a phone, but it was ahead of its time. But at the same time, it had a lot of really awkward features, which um, didn't really do it any favours. Hey, it's going well, thanks. Now I finally got the stream up and running. I don't know whether you, if you follow me, if you have the notifications on, whether you saw it keep going on and off, but I was really struggling to get this working earlier. So thanks so much for coming along and I've, I've just got started with Sonic 3 and Knuckles. Kind of similar to X vs Sever. Well that's cool, X vs Sever is a good game. Ah, this is the other one. So this one is, um, what would you call this, a gacha machine? Where you have to bounce off these springs and turn the handle and hopefully get something good out of it. But, like I said earlier, I don't really know what what all the 1-ups are doing. Because, yeah, if you know what Sonic Origins is like, there's no such thing as lives. So, I think they're just adding to the coin counter at the bottom. 
which you can use to unlock things um, in the museum in the game. Hey, I didn't even realise I got the electric shield, that's cool. Yeah, X vs. Sever was really cool. Oh, they fixed it! There's, um, there's a glitch on the Mega Drive where if you pause and restart the game on this bit, it stops the sound of this battleship flying overhead. But that's the first time that I've tried that and it doesn't make any difference. I've been tempted actually talking about X vs. Sever to do a game to do a video about um, 3D GBA games for a while. I know I did one about D makes and that went down really well. But I'm really interested to see Ah, uh, let me on the side. Oh no, I couldn't get back up. I just realised I haven't put my lights on as well. There we go. Should look a bit a bit better now. There we go. And I'm in focus. No cheating. Uh what trying to stay on his head. Oh you haven't seen that yet. Oh now I've got to sit through this again. Uh, yeah, what was I saying? I want to do a video about 3D GBA games. Because I've got some really interesting ones. There's um, a Herbie game, like a third party Herbie port that actually looks amazing. And Sega Rally on the GBA as well. That's a super impressive game. It almost looks like it could be running on the Sega Saturn. It's that good. And it's got a really good smooth frame rate as well. And the same with V Rally too. Right, we could be more careful now. Eh? Get some easy hits in before he comes over. I'm still not entirely sure what they've done with the boss fights to stop them being broken in widescreen on this port. But there's something weird about them. I don't know whether they're slightly stretched. Yeah, it was always really impressive to see 3D backgrounds on, um, on GBA games. Super impressive stuff. Oh no, am I still a bit of potato can? I think I am a bit. I think the the quality is still not great. Hey, it's ah! I wasn't looking. I died straight away. I'm just gonna try and see whether I can increase the bit rate slightly. Now that I've got it running using the uh, Ethernet port. So no, it doesn't look like I, I can change it while it's live. It says there's no dropped frames though, but it looks like the camera's a bit grainy. How does it look for you guys? I've been really frustrated trying to get the settings right. Oh my god, I died again. Let's see what's right. It might have cleared up actually, maybe it was just a little blip. There was one you played called Pocket something. Um, was it a racing game? I don't think I know any called Pocket. It might have been Choru Q, I think maybe the Japanese name of that was like Pocket Races or something like that. Okay, if it looks good, I'll leave it as it is. Handsome boy. Now I've got my light on. I hate things that don't look perfect when it comes to video. I'm thinking of upgrading my camera soon, just to, to get rid of the rolling shutter that I've been experiencing with it. Hey, Rissu choose to thank for the new layout. She actually helped me make that. Well, she did make it. So, thanks. It's still work in progress. So, it might it might change. I'll just get them one of those rings. Yeah, a cartoony racing game. It was probably Choro Q, or it could have been Konami Crazy Racers. But I think that one just uses Mode 7. I think there was also a Top Gear, um, a Top Gear racing game for the GBA, which looks really good.
Yeah, I'm glad you like the new layout for the streams. I've been trying to get it so that like if, if someone new follows it'll show up as well and stuff like that. Um, and then maybe when I reach affiliate, if anyone actually subscribes. I didn't use the font. No, I don't have the font downloaded on here, I don't think, so it's just using Arial. But I can change that for next time. I think the person who's followed there was followed just before I went live the first time. So it might not have shown up. Maybe if you try and unfollow and then follow again, see whether that makes it pop up. It was working when I tested it. Let's do another. Oh! Ah! Let's do another special stage. Crazy Racers was cool, one of the first GBA games. Yeah, it was one of the it was one of the first GBA games that I played as well. It was I think it was a launch title actually, or at least it was very close to launch. Hey, it is working! I just saw the pop-up there. Yay, that's cool. Apparently you can change it so you can have a gif of whatever you want in the background next to the person's name, so <clears throat> maybe I could get it to uh, be something retro gaming related instead of just a random heart. And um, Risu showed me something cool as well where you can get little pixel versions of your name like as a game character walking around. So when you talk, they actually have like speech bubbles coming out of them and they walk around on the bottom of the screen. Which sounds cool. Oh, what am I supposed to do here? Go all the way around the outside. I feel like the frame rate for this special stage hasn't improved as much as the other games. Da -da 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 -da. Personalized emotes. I don't know how you get them. Is that um, is that an affiliate thing as well, or a Twitch partner thing? I presume you can get them. Yeah, you can because I'm subscribed to some people on here who have them. I don't know why I'm doing all the bonus stuff. I don't usually play the game this slowly. I guess it's helping me read chat at the same time if I'm not rushing through everything. Hope you're enjoying yourselves anyway so far. I really do love Sonic 3. Oh no! I think Eggman heard me. I'm not allowed to love Sonic 3. Oh no, I didn't even get any rings from it. Yeah, that's it, stream avatars. There was, um, well, the Pokemon one that she was showing me, but there's some other really cool ones as well. There's a Smash Bros pack, which looks good. Um, it uses like 8-bit Nintendo character sprites. All the different Smash Bros characters. Uh, I thought I could get one more hit in then. This is kind of a weird fight because the rings don't go anywhere. So you can basically just keep jumping at them and it doesn't really matter. And then you can just keep holding down to go like that. Whee! Try to get an affiliate for the emotes. You just have to keep streaming. Stream more often. You'll get affiliate soon. If you keep doing it. I can't remember what all the criteria is. You have to have a certain amount of hours streamed every month as well or something. Tails, no! At least Tails doesn't seem quite so incompetent as he was in, in Sonic 2. His AI is just broken in that game. On this collection, anyway. I don't know why, but I always used to really panic on that section. But I seem to get through it okay then. I love these water slides as well. They just look pretty cool. And the hand that picks you up there. I love this level. And the music's really cool too. Yay, there we go, that makes up for the bad 
um, route that I took in the last one. There's not really much point hanging around in these stages, because usually you would come here to get extra continues and one-ups and things, but as you don't need one-ups in this version of the game, I guess there's no point staying them. So, let's just carry on. I'll try and get all the emeralds. I mean, I think I'm already about halfway through. I know there is a way, at least I think there's a way of getting all of them within the first two stages or something, if you know where to look. I don't know. But I don't remember it all off by heart like that. Yeah, a certain number of consistent people watching. Um, I think interacting as well, so if you actually write on the chat, that's that adds towards it. Because I think Twitch likes people having the... Um, you know, the interaction. When you're going to do Shadow the Hedgehog. Whenever I reach Affiliate, that'll be my celebration game. I'll play Shadow the Hedgehog. Ugh. Even the thought of it is making me shudder. I know someone at uni who actually missed lectures because he was trying to finish Shadow the, Hod Shadow the Hedgehog. <laughs> when I asked him, was it worth it, he said he never wants to even look at the game ever again. If you want to try and get the good ending on Shadow, it's insanely difficult. You have to replay all the levels like 20 times or something to get all the different endings. I don't know why they made it so convoluted. Well, well, Mick, after after what Yuji Naka tweeted the other day, it's it's obviously Hydro City. There's no debate anymore. It's official. And um, as for what I used to call it, I think I used to fluctuate between Hydro City and Hydrocity. Uh, but yeah, apparently Hydro City is the official way of saying it. Although, then he said his English isn't great, so don't quote him on that or something, so who knows. Also, something super funny about Yuji Naka the other day, when he tweeted that it was Nights into Dreams 25th anniversary, or... Yeah, I think 25th anniversary. Um, he actually scribbled out the uh, director, or the, the producer for the game, in a photo because of the mess with with him and that guy, I can't remember his name now, but when they were working on Balan Wonderland, or Wonderworld, um, they basically took Yuji Naka off the project before it was finished, and he got the blame for it being a really bad, a really bad game in the end. But I just thought it was funny that he actually crossed the guy's picture out of, uh, out of like the, the team get-together image. Hydrocity City. How about that? Are there any other Sonic stages that are controversially um, where people don't know how to pronounce them? I'm trying to think now, I don't think there's anything else like that. Can't think of anything like that anyway. And while we're on the topic of different zones, what's everyone's favourite zone in Sonic 3 and Knuckles? For me, it's um, probably Lava Reef. I love the music in that stage, and I love how different Act 1 and 2 is as well. And my least favourite is probably... Sandopolis? Yeah, probably Sandopolis, because I hate the section with the ghosts. Flying Battery. Yeah, Flying Battery is awesome. Hydrocity City is a good one too. It kind of feels like this game's equivalent of Chemical Plant, in a way. Right, I think what you need to do here is wait for him to drop the bombs and then, ah, and then not do that. Balan Wonderland. Yeah, I don't know why they called it Wonderworld. Wonderland just... Uh, just makes a lot more sense. Tails. What are you doing, Tails? I think I missed time some then. Yeah, Ice Cap's good as well, but I'm curious to see how bad the new music is. Because I've heard people really hate it. 
Apparently, John Snow didn't do a very good job um, trying to match the Mega Drive sound chip either. And yeah, if you've heard what he did with Sonic 4, then you'll know. Apparently, people think he's not that great with using the Mega Drive style sounds. But I think Sonic 4's soundtrack was okay. It's just a bit repetitive, really. I don't think it's terrible. Uh, I'll just take this fight slow, shall I? Yay! Not as bad as the new boss in Sonic 2 in um, Hidden Palace Zone. That one's annoying. Yeah, Sandopolis is definitely the worst one in Three and Knuckles. As well as it having one of those stupid endless tunnel things. They're so annoying. Oh, this is probably my other least favourite level. Just because of how big it is. The music's cool, but I really don't like this level because it's just way too big for its own good. And there's a few frustrating parts to it. And when I was a kid, I didn't know what you were supposed to do on them. You have to do a spin dash and then it opens different parts of the level up. The other thing that I don't really like about this stage is the um, spinning drill thing that you can that you can go on, which we'll we'll see in a bit if I'm going the right way. Yeah, here. So it controls really, really weirdly. Oh, I lost it straight away. Then carry me up there, tails. Such a shame the licensing issues hit. Yeah, but if it was a choice of having licensing issues or never having the game remade at all, then I guess I'm okay with a different soundtrack. It's not ideal, and yeah, the tracks that are missing were definitely some of the best ones. Come on, pick me up. Come on, pick me up. Thank you. Oh yeah, this is another glitch with this version of the game. And apparently this happens every time as well. The debris that's falling here shouldn't still be falling. It should have stopped once that drill thing fell away from the ceiling. But for some reason it's just endlessly raining raining bricks and things from the sky. Which it shouldn't be doing. And we've got another special stage. <laughs> It does feel like there's something missing with the sounds not getting faster. Oh, I missed one. Okay, now over here. I've lost track of which direction I was going now. Here's some new ones. I think these are the easiest special stages out of the original Sonic games. Because once you've got the timing right for the corners, there isn't really that much you need to worry about. Um, yeah, sometimes you can mess up like that and then you don't get the rings, but it's easy enough to correct yourself. Right. The hardest bit is figuring out where you need to go next to find them. Let's try over here. There's some. Is that the last ones? Yeah, there we go. Easy. <clears throat> How many's that now? Five. Can't remember how many there is on this one. Kind of like the not mode 7 look of these ones. Yeah, it looks cool. I think they've sped it up slightly compared to the original too. Uh, the frame rate's a little bit better. It's not as big of an improvement as, the, um, as they did on Sonic 1 and 2 though. So, yeah. It's not as impressive as those ones in terms of how the special stages look. But it's still a nice upgrade. But once again, I'm not really seeing that much of a difference playing in widescreen. Everyone was really excited about the games being in 16x9, but... Maybe it's just because I've played these games so much in the past that I don't really think about the extra screen space it's given me. Do I have plans for what I want to play after Origins? Um, not really. 
I was trying to think earlier, like, what should I... Hey, yeah, that's better. Ah! Stop. So once you reach the floor, you should just shoot off like that and go super fast and try not to crash into the wall. Uh, what would you guys like to see me play after Origins? Any suggestions? I want to do some things for uh, games that I want to record for videos. But apart from that, I think just playing interesting retro games or some new games that I want to play anyway, I may as well play them on stream. I know the um, the Klonoa collection's coming out soon, and I've got that on pre-order, so maybe I'll do that next. Maybe I can stream that next week. Would people be interested in seeing the Klonoa games? They're really fun. I did actually... Ah, I fell off there. It reminds me, I did actually play... I tried to do a Let's Play of Klonoa... Um, Dream Champ tournament on the GBA back at uni, but I've messed this up. I hate these things, they're so hard to control. Basically, you have to run at full speed and then and then that's how you change direction. But if you get stuck on a wall like that, then you start going the wrong way. <laughs> when am I going to stream Clan Ad? Um, I don't think that would be a good idea because I would never get any work done, ever. I need to go in there. There we go. If I stream Conrad, I would never stop. Maybe if I do a 24-hour live stream one day, then I'll do a 24-hour Clanad stream. And even if I did that, I'd probably only just get through the intro of the game. The game's so long. I hate to think how many hours I've put into it. On PC. Uh, eh. I'm a bit worried about this special stage, because as you can see, once you block off the other exit, then you don't have enough room to jump over everything to get to the next area. So you have to be a bit careful to not close off all the possibilities here. Like that, that means that that way is blocked now. And there's still 36 left. Okay, I haven't been this way. So this should be... Oh, it's just going around in a circle, but... Maybe that is all that's left now, is these ones around the outside. Let's see, where have I been this way? Uh-oh. It's getting close. I think I'm missing some. Eight left. Have I blocked myself in? Oh no, I think I blocked myself in. I'm not going to do the replays. Yeah, Klonoa sounds good. Cool, yeah. I'll do Klonoa next time then. I finally got all the games in the Klonoa series as well, so I want to do... Um, a retrospective on them all at some point. So that'll be the first game that I'm actually playing and recording for YouTube at the same time then, so that'll be cool. And uh, yeah, I'm really excited, especially to replay Klonoa 2, because uh, that was definitely one of my favourite games on the PS2. It's so good. The GBA ones are really cool too. Um, and I could probably stream them as well using the GameCube. But we'll see how it goes. I don't want to bore people with just playing too many of the same game. I want to try and branch out a bit. I was thinking about some of the games that I know I definitely want to stream. Uh, one of them is definitely Rocket Knight Adventures and Sparkster. I know I've already done Let's Plays on them both in the past, but I really do love them games so much. And I would be more than happy to replay them for the thousandth time. Oh my god, anything other than Bubble? Bubble's not even very useful here. One up. Even though there's no such thing as one ups. Don't want a bubble one. Um, yeah, that one. But, oh no, I missed it. With the lightning one. Oh, see what I mean about Marvel Garden being such a long zone? It's too long for its own good. Five minutes in this level now. 
It's not a bad level. Like the, the theming of it's quite nice, but yeah, I don't like it. I would even rather play. Um, what's the level in Sonic One called? Marble. Is it just called Marble Zone? Not Marble Garden. Oh, I loved making the Umi Haruko Essay retrospective. That's one of my other favourite series, as you'll know if you saw that video. Maybe I could stream some of them games. That'd be fun. Although I'm not really as good at them as I'd like to be. They are really technical games. I was also thinking about streaming some Trackmania as well, which was another game that I did a retrospective on that I really love. And I've been trying to get back into it. I don't really have that much time to play games outside of games that I'm recording for YouTube though. But I really do want to play more Trackmania. I want to try making some more levels in it as well, so maybe I could stream the level creation sometime, that might be fun. Because uh, one of my friends from college has got into it recently and he's been talking to me about it. And that finally got me to log back in again the other day, and I was really enjoying it. I just wish I had more time to play it. It's such a shame that the new Umihara Kawase games aren't really the same as what they used to be. Because the original three are honestly some of my favourite games ever. But they really went weird with the franchise after Sayonara. Like Bazooka and Fresh just don't feel like Umihara games at all. There's just something weird about them. Maybe it's the engine they use? It's not really the fact that they're 3D, because Sayonara was in 3D and that one was fun. Oh man, this level's just boring. There's just nothing to do with it, really. <sighs> Let me know what your thoughts of Marble Garden are. Is it your least favourite level from Sonic 3? I think we've got a, a more interesting level coming up next, anyway. I think it's Ice Cap next, is it? It'll be the first one with a different soundtrack, anyway. I hope. Oh, it could be Carnival Night. I think I'm going to stop going into those mini special stages. Because you don't really get anything for it. In this version. Hey, that grasshopper came out of nowhere then. Okay, I, t I get it. I'm not meant to be over there. What is it with creepy statue heads throwing arrows at you? I feel like quite a lot of Mega Drive like having weird creepy heads that throw things at you. Sparkster has the same kind of thing. One of the bosses is a creepy head inside a tree. I don't know whether that's like some weird 90s obsession. I always thought it was weird. Oh, good job I turned the right way then. I could have ended up going the wrong way then and that this bit would have taken a lot longer. Oh, I think that's broken. I should be whizzing across the floor now, but I just ended up going straight up instead. My god, these, this level just goes on forever. It goes on forever, and it's not really that interesting either. Like, it just feels like you're going through the same kind of places over and over. Oh, I don't think I've been this way in a long time. Is it going to break on me again? There isn't any debris at all, though. Don't get stabbed by that either. I remember if you if you're um, not cautious there, you can just spin dash straight into it. Oh, I almost got squashed there as well. Then I forgot you have the um, what's that move called? Drop dash. Ah. Horrible grasshoppers. 
out of nowhere. Scuffed ice caps next, yep. The first time I actually played Sonic 3 was on the PC, and so I did actually already have experience with the music they used in this game, because it's actually the soundtrack for the PC version of Sonic, Sonic 3 and Knuckles. So in some ways I've kind of, I'm kind of looking forward to hearing it again, because I haven't heard that version of the soundtrack in a long time. And I kind of wish they would have given you the option at least to listen to that that version of the soundtrack throughout the entire game as well. Just to make it unique and make it feel like having that extra soundtrack is actually something that they wanted to do. Rather than something they needed to do. Oh yeah, Scuffed Carnival Night. Listen to that weird, mushy song. So weird. It feels, it just sounds unfinished. I really like the original Carnival Night as well. This one just sounds like random blips and bloops. Maybe it'll grow on me. So, apart from Klonoa, which I'll be doing next, what other games would you guys like me to, to do a stream of in the future? Is there anything in particular you'd like me to do? That oh, looks like I can't go that way. Anything in particular you'd like to see me play? Maybe something I've mentioned in the past in a video that um, you want to see me play all the way through? Or anything you're interested in? Maybe a rare game that's difficult to get? Because I can stream from all the original systems now as well. Which I'll actually see in tomorrow's video because I changed the schedule for what video is coming out. So. Tomorrow's one's going to be a really interesting one if you're interested in um, how to get things set up to record for YouTube and stuff like that. I think I've made a really good video, so look forward to that one tomorrow. Ah. I'm not going through them anymore. They're a bit pointless. We're going to get to the, the bit that confuses everyone soon, where you have to move the barrel up and down. I never actually had any trouble with that part of the level, so I was quite surprised to find out when I got the internet that that was an area that people really struggled with. Because I thought, I thought it was quite intuitive. But we'll see. You'll see in a minute what I'm on about. There we go, got it. No, oh, I don't think I'm supposed to go through there. Didn't go anywhere. Not sure what the point of them is either. Good job I had the invincibility. Oh my god, this music's depressing. It's nowhere near as good as the, the regular one. Oh, this is this is weird in widescreen. You can see how how it scrolls from left to right. I don't care about losing rings here. It's not like you're gonna lose them. out attack. I don't think that's how you're supposed to do that boss, but I always get impatient with this one. And you can't lose the rings, because they just bounce around from side to side. So there's really nothing to worry about. <laughs> mm. 
more weird music. Bum 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 bum. bum. It just feels like there's something missing. I don't know whether you guys saw the Digital Foundry video, but he compared it to the PC version using different sound cards. And these songs can actually sound really good if they if they're set up using the right uh, like the Roland system. I can't remember what the other one is they used, but yeah, these songs could have sounded a lot better than they actually do. But I guess they wanted to keep using the same Mega Drive. Um, what would you call them? The same instrument samples? I guess that's the right word for it. Even though it does sound a bit muddy. But it's weird not having any vocal samples in the song. Because obviously, a lot of the Michael Jackson music had the sort of, you know, his signature vocal style playing in the background. So it's really weird not having that. Again, there's not really much point being here in this special stage. Let's see if I can get anything good. No, Eggman's just proven my point. There's no point being here. There's no need for that animation to go on that long either. I'm just going to jump out. Oh, that's why I went in there, because that spring hit me back. Oh, bye Tails, I think he just died. Maybe I'll play the Sonic Advance games on stream as well. They're, they're really fun. Sonic Advance 2 is my favourite of the three. Um, what about anyone watching? What's your favourite Sonic Advance game? For me it goes 2, 1 and then 3. Again, oh, I don't. I don't like how big the levels are in 3 and they feel a little bit messy as well. But 2 obviously has the problem of all the bottomless pits. Which people also hate, so... I might go back and get that, actually. If I can get through. Oh my god, let me in. There we go, got it. Just to be safe. What? What just happened? I don't know what just killed me then. That was weird. I'm pretty sure that was a glitch, because I didn't see anything there. Okay. Maybe I should just carry on and ignore this section. Okay, I'm not going to jump or anything. Apparently that can just kill you instantly. Okay. You like three the best. What, what makes you like three more than one and two? I'd say 3 is my least favourite. I guess it's cool that you've got the multiple characters. But I didn't think the level designs were as memorable. Um, and the music as well. The music in Advance 2 is incredible. For the GBA especially. It's not often you get a GBA game with such high quality music. I hope Sega does acknowledge the Advance games at some point in the future. It'd be cool to get a Sonic Advance collection. Maybe they will. I mean, there's other um, GBA collections coming out, like there was the Castlevania one. Recently, there's the Mega Man Battle Network one coming out uh, next year, which I'm really looking forward to, by the way. Absolutely love Mega Man Battle Network. I've never played number two, though. Weirdly. I've played all the other ones. And they're all really fun. Battle Network 3 was the one that I grew up with. Like, that was the one that me and a friend in, in school had. And we, we would talk about it all the time, like, comparing the cards that we'd got and trying to figure out where to go next and everything like that. 
I think we even got our GBAs confiscated at one point. It was that and Pokemon. They were the two games that we played all the time back then. Oh, I didn't know whether that was a projectile or not. Ow. I don't like being underwater. Oh, there we go. The water's going. I always thought it was cool the second part of this stage where the lights go off. It gives it a nice atmosphere that's quite different. Here's one of those barrels that you can adjust by moving up and down. So you just have to hold up and down and then you can adjust the speed that it moves. I think there was a pinball game. Yeah, there was Sonic Pinball Party, which is pretty cool. It's also got a Nights into Dreams table as well, which I really liked at the time, being a huge Nights into Dreams fan. I think I've got that on a two-in-one collection that had Sonic 1, Sonic Advance 1, and Sonic Pinball Party. There was Sonic Battle as well, which is an interesting game. Ah, no! I couldn't get off there in time. Hell yeah, Battle Network. Yeah, I can't wait. I don't think that's really the kind of game to stream, though, because they're kind of slow. Ah, uh, you watch the show as well. I used to have it on DVD. And the Star Force series as well that came after it. it was such a cheesy, like, early 2000s TV show, but I loved it. Have you ever seen any of the other Mega Man cartoons? There was a new one that was on Netflix or Cartoon Network or something a few years ago, but I haven't seen that one. Oh, talking about Mega Man shows, did you ever see that fan film as well? It was really good, actually. Like a live, a live action fan film. I think it came out in like 2010 or a bit earlier than that, 2009 maybe. But at the time I liked it. Like, it's probably difficult to go back to now. I remember that some of the Robot Masters were uh, CG and some were live action, which was a really weird mix, and it looked really weird, especially when they were all in the same scene. And then there's a bit where you go to Dr. Wily's castle and he was really sweaty for some reason. I remember laughing about that. But it is really good, I wonder if people still remember it. I think it got fairly decent reviews. I remember Screw Attack, the people who... Um, uh, I'm getting squashed a lot today. Oh my god, back here again. Yeah, on the Screw Attack podcast. They kept talking about how good um, that Mega Man movie was. I don't know whether they were saying that ironically or not, though. Was it a good movie? I can't remember. And I know there was plans to actually do a proper Hollywood adaptation of the game as well, but I don't know how far along into produ production that ever got. I remember it was in the news a lot on Rockman Corner back in the day. But I think they had some problem with people leaving the scripts and stuff. Hey, good to hear another Screw Attack fan. I watched Side Scrollers religiously back in the day. I think that was like the first podcast that I properly listened to every single episode of. And I was in their G1 community as well, over on Game Trailers and the ScrewAttack.com. Good times. Honestly, it's probably thanks to ScrewAttack that I actually have a YouTube channel in the first place. Because I, I really wanted to be featured on their, on their website. I remember I submit, uh, submitted a lot of my earlier videos to them. But... I don't think they were actually good enough for anyone to care about back then. Which is a bit sad, but I was just a kid. Right, I've got to be careful not to get squished here. And it's good to see that some of the Screw Attack team are still doing things online. I know Pro Jared had a lot of controversy around uh, some questionable choices that he made, but, you know, it doesn't stop him been an entertaining YouTuber, and I still watch his stuff. But, yeah, I better not say too much about him, because, uh, yeah, I think people are still not happy about what he did. But it was cool that Stuttering Craig came back as well, for a while at least, with his YouTube channel. 
And they actually did a, a special Side Scrollers episode where they got Chad back on there as well. But I don't think he's doing anything online these days. But it was cool to see him back again anyway. And you should check out some of the Stuttering Craig uh, podcast episodes that he did on his own channel. They're really interesting. He did one with... Oh my god, again! Unfairly squashed to death. Where's it going to restart me this time? Okay, at least I hit a checkpoint. That was not fair. I could not have seen that coming. Um, but yeah, check out Stuttering Craig's YouTube channel. And check out... He did a few podcasts, actually. He did one with AVGN, because obviously he kind of got his start on Screw Attack and game trailers. But he also did some really interesting ones with Nitro Rad, another one of my favourite YouTubers, who's still going, and his videos are still amazing to this day. So I really enjoyed hearing um, his thoughts on content creation. Nitro Rad's an amazing YouTuber. And he did one with Tommy Talrico, which I guess has aged poorly, if you saw the news about the Amico. But it was still an interesting uh, thing to listen to. But then, after a while, I don't know whether he ran out of guests to talk about or not, but he wanted to, like, do some podcast episodes with his brother, and they were just talking about nonsense, and I kind of lost interest then. But when he had actual decent guests on, though, I was really enjoying it. Especially the Nitro Red one. I think I've listened to that like two or three times now. Yay! Got into the checkpoint. Oh, the camera can't keep up with me. I don't remember that happening in the original. Yeah, don't talk about Tommy anymore. He's gone off the rails. And he's been blocking anyone who says anything bad about the Intellivision. Was sad. I think he meant well. And it was an interesting concept, but I don't really think there was an audience for it. Wow, I killed that boss fast. I didn't even get to see his attack. Oh, I just noticed I've got 70 followers. Thank you, too. Let's see who the new ones are. I can't hear the alert, so thanks to All Hail King of the Losers. Do I say thanks to him? Maybe. Um, let's see, Batch Gaming, thank you, 30 minutes ago. Oh, and now we get another weird music as well. And thank you to Ghost Burb, who followed me one minute ago. So thank you so much. Say hi in the chat if you want. Let me know how you found the stream as well. Did you come here from YouTube? Did you come here from Twitter? That'd be interesting to know, because I don't really know how people find people on Twitch. It's not really something I've been that involved with in the past, at least compared to YouTube, which is pretty much my entire life. So it'd be interesting to know how you guys got here. And how often do you watch Twitch as well, actually? That's an interesting question. Because outside of GDQ, I never really used to watch any Twitch at all. But I've been getting into watching more people more recently. I've quite enjoyed watching some IRL streams as well. But I don't know whether I would ever do any of them. Maybe, actually. I just thought maybe I can try doing one at Play Expo in October. Would that be something that you would be up for, for seeing? Trying to attempt to IRL stream? I'm going there as a VIP again this year, so I can take, hopefully, my new camera, which is going to be a Sony A7S III. Hopefully I can take that and do a really good video for them, because um, they haven't had the show on in a few years, and I'm really excited to go back. And yeah, I'm going as a VIP, me and some friends. And, uh, yeah, really looking forward to, to getting back into making videos for different events again, like I used to back in, like, 2017, 16. So I'm really happy that things have started to open back up again, though. 
Oh, maybe you can't stop that. And that will help keep my channel fresh as well. Having more content than just sitting behind this desk all the time. Even though I'm really happy with this desk and my setup and stuff at the minute. But yeah, it'll be nice to get some more variety. So I'm looking forward to being able to go out and about more. Oh yeah, Slopes Game Room does a live podcast, doesn't he? Maybe I should try doing that. I haven't recorded a podcast episode in a while, actually. I had an idea for one, but I need to write some notes for what I want to say. I tried recording it and I wasn't happy with it, so I actually deleted the episode. I'm going to try again at some point. But... The podcast is just like a little side hobby for me. Whenever I want to talk about something that I know I'll do terribly on YouTube, basically. Uh... Discoverability on Twitch is really bad. Yeah, especially compared to YouTube, there's not even any, like, recommended feed or... The homepage only shows, like, four or five people. So I don't really know how you're supposed to build an audience on Twitch if you don't already have one somewhere else. It does seem very difficult for new people. Smaller to medium popularity games you can find easier. Yeah. Is there much of a retro scene on Twitch? I don't really know. I know there's a retro category, but when I've been on there, it only seems like people who've got like 20 viewers, which is quite surprising. You'd think it'd be more popular. But maybe I guess it's just not not popular with the audience that, that visits Twitch, maybe. Oh, I missed hitting the goalpost then. Hmm. I think one thing I need to do in the future on on OBS is get the chat to stay longer on that window. Because it looks like people's comments are disappearing. Listening to this music is so weird. Ice Cap Zone is some of my favourite songs in any Sonic game, really, so... To hear this really weird remix... It's not even a remix, it's a completely different song. But yeah, just hearing this is very strange. And I do kind of remember it from back in the day on the PC. Retro does decent mainly, but just for speedrunning. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. I like watching speedrunning, but I'm not really that interested in trying to do it properly myself. The only game that I've really attempted to do speedruns of is Mario Land on the Game Boy. And at one point, back in 2008, I did actually manage to almost tie with the world record. I think I managed to get a time of like 16 minutes or 12 minutes or something like that. I can't remember exactly, but I remember looking on the Speed Demos archive and I was almost at the top of the leaderboard, but I never actually submitted anything because you needed to record it. And I'd just been playing it at college over and over again. Tea? Yes, please. I would love a tea. Needs that Uio style, yep. There's definitely something missing. This is painful to listen to. This is horrible. It's so sad. It just sounds so generic. I don't think I'm going fast enough. No. I have to go the, the lower route. The scary route. Sonic 3 just really wants to squash you at every opportunity. Ah. The bosses in Sonic 3 seem really, really easy. I don't know whether I'm just getting lucky. There's a good retro scene on Twitch. If you're a small streamer, it can be beneficial to play games where there's a higher amount of viewers for a game and a lower amount of channels playing that game. Yeah, that makes sense. I don't really think I'm going to pick games based on what's going to get viewed though. I think I'll just pick games based on what I actually want to play. Because it 
Twitch is never going to be my... Twitch is never going to be the thing that I really... I don't want to say not care about, because I will care about it, but it's not my priority. So I don't want to feel like... Um, how do I word this? I don't want to feel like I'm under any obligation to do anything that I don't want to do. Maybe. Does that make sense? I just want to do things for the fun of it here. Because YouTube can be stressful if I'm trying to decide what videos to make to make sure they'll hit a certain number or make sure that my regular subscribers aren't disappointed with what I put out or anything. But yeah, on Twitch, I don't want to worry about any of that stuff. I just want to stream whatever I find interesting at the time. Hopefully that's a good way of thinking. Plasma phobia. That sounds like a weird futuristic version of it where you've got like plasma rifles or something. I'd be up for playing Phasmophobia at some point. I have to figure out how to stream in VR. Oh no, maybe I could do a VR chat stream as well. Maybe that's going too far. Maybe I could stream some Beat Saber. That might be fun to go through some custom songs. If I don't get demonetized. Or whatever the alternative is on Twitch. I guess it's still called demonetized. Oh yeah, you have to watch out for the fire here. I need to play more VR. I spent so much money on getting all the different headsets and I barely play it these days. Not that I don't like it. It's just... I don't know, it's not as convenient. And there's not really that many new games coming out that I'm that interested in. The last one that I really, really enjoyed in VR was... Um, Gadgeteer. Which is a really cool puzzle game. I think that's a good idea. The good thing is you already have an audience on YouTube who will come and see me on Twitch. Yeah, that's true. And I haven't actually spoke about Twitch on YouTube yet. So maybe um, if I bring it up in a video in the future, that will help. I've only, I've only wrote about it on the community tab so far. But I do feel bad for people who are trying to start on Twitch and don't already have a YouTube channel or something they can bounce off like that. I think there's a channel or a category that's just retro games. Yeah, I think so. I haven't really looked on there, though. I think I've got this tagged on retro, even though I don't know whether it should be, because I'm playing it on the Switch. Ah, itchy ear. Yeah, I don't know whether... Um, I don't know whether this should be tagged under retro or not. Searching for Resi 3 Classic is hard. People keep putting the remake in the wrong category. I've probably put this in the wrong category. Oh, you see that thing there? Oh, I missed it. I went down too far. I was going to try and stop and let you see that switch there. But someone um, hacked into the game's code and found out what they called that switch. And it's called Sus. Because it looks like the Among Us thing. Thing. Let's see whether I can find another one. I think this music's a bit different as well. Like, did they get rid of some of the voice samples? I have to open the window a bit, it's hot. And get rid of this. Hey look, Sonic Pillow. On brand for playing a Sonic game. No, is this going to be another easy boss? Get Tails to attack him. Sometimes it is actually easier to like go underneath and get Tails to jump on them. I don't know whether I can rely on doing that though. Hey, you got an extra hit in there. Tails at least is a bit more useful in Sonic 3 than he is in Sonic 2. 
Oh, you only have to kill one of them. Another really easy boss. Dun, 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 dun. Whoa, another weird new music. I'm really not a fan of these new songs. Is it? It's already 10 o'clock. I might just finish the Sonic 3 portion of the game tonight. I was planning on playing both, but because of all the stream messing up at the beginning, I kind of missed out on an hour, so... I think I'll just get to the end of Sonic 3 and then call it a night there. And then next week, we can finish it off with Sonic and Knuckles. Let's just treat them as two separate games for the collection. And... Tomorrow, I'm quite excited because it's officially my last day of work. All I have to go in, all I have to do tomorrow is go to the office and hand in my laptop and give back in the badge. And that's it, then I'm done. And that there, that's the thing that said sus in the game's code. And I shouldn't have pressed it because that actually blocked them off. The new music tracks make me want to vomit, vomit a bit. Ugh. Yeah, absolutely. They're just messy. There's like no rhythm to it. Just this one's just. Compared to how cool the normal version of this song is, that just like shouts "go" all the time. This, this was. This is one of my favourite tracks in the normal game. And then this one just doesn't have any energy. Yep, sus as in a mongoose. Um, there was there were some other Easter eggs like that as well. I can't remember what they were now. Hey, thanks. Yeah, I'm really excited to start my new job. I start on Monday, so I don't get a break between jobs, unfortunately. But I'm really excited either way. Finally, doing something that I actually want to be doing. I did write a little blog post about it today as well, if you want to check that out on my website later. I know it's not related to retro gaming or anything, but I thought, you know, it's a, it's a big life event. I want to write something so that I can remember it in the future. So I wrote up a little bit about, you know, what I've been doing at work over the past eight years and how I've not been entirely happy about everything and, you know, finally decided to actually do something about it rather than just waiting for things to happen, which never did. I won't really go into it too much here because it's probably kind of boring to listen to, but yeah, I'm glad I won't have to put up with a lot of things at work anymore. And hopefully I'll just be a bit more upbeat in general. I might even help out with videos. There's another one of those sus buttons. Oh, I should have stayed on there then. That one spins so fast, it can actually throw you away. But eventually my long-term goal is to go full-time on YouTube. How many years that's going to take, I don't know. People say you need maybe... Well, some people say you can do it as low as 20,000 subs, but I think with my kind of channel, and the fact that I don't have anything to sell, probably need at least 100,000. So... Yeah, I'll definitely need to try and change up my content a little bit if I want to, you know, if I want to become a bigger channel. I don't know how to do that without selling out or without making boring videos for me to make. I don't know. It's a slow process. Hopefully just people finally find me because I'm making good videos and want to stick around. We'll see. Hopefully I'll make it someday. Maybe in another... How long have I been on YouTube now? 16 years? 15 years? Maybe in another 15 years, maybe I'll make enough money then to go full-time. I'm not holding out any hope, it's just like wishful thinking. But yeah, until then, at least now I've got an interesting job that I can not be stressed about all the time and you know actually want to go to. So that'll be nice. Ooh, good job that, um, good job it doesn't throw you off the end there. Ooh, 
I was about to say, oh my god, a boss that I can't just cheese, but... Maybe not. At least you can't get the rings back on this one, so it makes it a little bit more challenging. Tails, how did you die then? Again, another super easy boss fight. I'm not sure what's going on with all these bosses. Ah, and now, because it carries straight onto Sonic and Knuckles, this fight is actually going to be different to how it was originally. I think originally this would have been the final boss, or it would have taken you to it. But instead you have this boss, which is like one that goes from Sonic 3 into Sonic and Knuckles, if I remember right anyway. Good job you have that extra attack where you can press jump in the air and do like a little extra hit. I feel like even the music that's still the same as normal doesn't sound as good either. Like there's something fuzzy about it or there's something that's not crisp like it is on the Mega Drive. Does anyone else feel that? This boss fight takes ages. Have I really been on this level for six minutes? Wow. Yay, finally. Right, what I think I'm going to do instead, rather than carry on to do the Sonic and Knuckles bits, because I don't think I'll finish that tonight, instead, when I get to the next level, and when I can save, I'm going to go and do some of the challenges in the game. Because some of them were actually really fun. And we can play them for maybe half an hour or so. Maybe I'll come off at 11. I don't need to rush that way either. That's a new effect. I don't remember that sprite scaling. Or maybe that's because I generally play the two games separately. Is it going to do the Sonic and Knuckles music? No, it's going to go straight into Mushroom Hill. So, what I'm going to do there is go back to the title screen here. Carry on from there in the next stream. And what I'm going to do is go and check out the challenge mode. Yeah, you agree the music sounds muffled as well. Oh, you've also got a blue spheres, blue spheres mode as well. But if we go to mission mode here, um, and go in missions, I've been really enjoying doing these. You can see I've already got S ranks on most of them. Uh, but basically they're like completely original level layouts and they all have different things for you to try and achieve. So let's see whether I can finish these ultra hard ones. So let's try this one. Extreme. Defeat at least 15 energy enemies using Spin Dash. Let's try this. Shouldn't be too hard. Although it was rated 4 stars, so I'm not sure... Maybe because there's spikes everywhere. Did that count? I think that counted. Plus the fact that it's using flying enemies, which uh, aren't exactly easy to hit using the Spin Dash. It feels wrong using the Spin Dash in Sonic 1. Uh, I need to go up there, maybe. Do I have to go back around? Uh, oh, there is a time limit. Oh no, there's not a time limit. The time limit is to get the better ranking. There's not much chance to actually do the Spin Dashes. Oh no! I needed to kill three more, and that's the end of the stage. When you end the stream later, you should try raiding someone. How do I do that? Um, if you let me know how, I'd, I'd love to. I think there's some people I follow that are online. Someone did that to me on my first stream because he'd been playing Sonic and I was like really overwhelmed and surprised. He brought like seven people with him. Hmm. No, there's nothing else up here. Yeah, if anyone knows how to raid someone. Or I'll try and figure it out before we before we go later. That'll be fun. I'm not on the right screen to see if anyone I follow is uh, actually streaming. But 
I can pause it in a bit and have a look. Ah, uh, no. I don't know how you're supposed to do this one fast. I still need to find four more. It'd be interesting watching speedruns of these challenges. Does that count? It does count. Okay, that's how you do it. I don't need to worry about that ones. C rank. I can do better than that. I've only used pole as a mod. Um, let's see if I can find the option. What am I on here? The dashboard. Twitch dashboard. If anyone's watching who's actually streamed on Twitch before, uh, how do you do it? There's no option on the dashboard. Maybe you need to go on someone's page while you're also live and then you can... Oh, Sonic is actually live. Sonic himself. Pass the plunger. I know him. Maybe I'll... Uh, maybe I'll raid him later. If I can figure out how to do it. No, there's not an option there. Go to Twitch. Browser, create a dashboard, stream manager. I'm on the stream manager now, but I can't see a raid channel thing. Edit stream info, clip, manage goals. Oh yeah, there it is, raid channel. Oh, and, and it shows you channels you follow as well. That's pretty easy to do actually then. Cool, I'll try that later. Uh, let's see, what's the next thing here? Extreme Aerial Attack, Marvel Zone Act 3, defeat 20 enemies in midair. Oh, as Knuckles as well. I always find it weird playing as Knuckles, because I never... I never play as Knuckles. I don't know why. Like, it's pretty fun to play as. But... His animations are a bit weird, though. Ah. Uh, Knuckles, you're not meant to be in Sonic 1. This is why. Oh no. It's really awkward. Original music, yay. Even though I hate this stage, the music's pretty catchy. I'm doing really badly. Has anyone tried these challenges before? Has anyone watching Got Sonic Origins? Oh, I'm getting my tea. And Harry Bow. Wow, thank you. Skittles. I don't think the camera can see him. Hello. Can you see him? If I come back? No. Skittles, come here. Uh, there you go. <laughs> I think they can see him now. Skittles. No kisses. All the you were sick yesterday. Mm -hmm. tasty, tasty. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye. Mm, there we go. We used to have echidnas wander through the high school. Oh wow. I've never seen one in real life. Yeah, you can see him. That's good. I wasn't sure whether he was in frame or not. I was trying to look on the replay then to see if I could see him, but I think it's gone. Golden Pooch. He makes a cameo in my new video as well. I tried sitting on the floor to record something and he jumped all over me, so I had to kick him out of the room after that. There's a weird thing with Knuckles where he kind of sticks on the floor for a second. Oh, there's nothing there. I need to get three more. Last one. Yay, I did it. 
I don't think I'm going to try and get an A rank on these, on these ones, or an S rank. He only wants lap time. The rest of the video would have been impossible to film. I also have a golden pooch, but a lot darker. Ridgeback Cross Staffy, that's cool. We've met loads of dogs, you know, going on walks and stuff. It's interesting seeing um, just all the different breeds and things. And I've definitely noticed that all of the small dogs are really noisy. Oh, oh my god, okay, I'm restarting this one. Oh, that's cute that he gets on with the cat. Oh no. Oh, this one's going to be difficult. I suppose you've just got to ignore the enemies and just keep going up. Maybe use that to jump up. Whoa! Okay, you can't stand on that one. Ah. See what I mean about all these challenges having really interesting new level layouts? I think they're really cool. Like, they've really put a lot of effort into them. Like, there isn't anywhere in Scrap Brain that actually looks like this. Not that I remember, anyway. It's like they just had a lot of fun with the level editor. Oh, can I get that far? Yes! Okay, that's the plan. And then dodge the electric. Oh no. Not sure how to dodge that one. Ah, restart. It's a shame there isn't more bonus material though, or more games in this collection. Like, it does feel quite bare bones, even compared to some of the older Sonic collections. They really did do the bare minimum just to be able to say that they'd released something for the anniversary, I feel. Maybe I should have streamed Sonic Jam on the Saturn instead. Ah, maybe that's a faster way of going there. Oh. Yeah, jump right at the last minute there. And I think stop on that one. I know a few folks who've 100 percent of it. A few aren't too fun, but most are. This one's a bit frustrating, but I think once you've got the pattern down, you'll be able to get through them. I love the idea of having these challenges, though. It's like a new way to experience the levels from the old games. Right, use that as a shield. Maybe go this side? Oh, no. Maybe stand on that spike and wait there. We'll try that. Right, it must take a long time to 100% them. Especially if you're going for S ranks. Or maybe I'm just really bad. There you go. You have to be really fast there. And wait here. Can I avoid that? Yes. Okay, stay on the side. Uh, how do you avoid that one? Maybe you've got to go on the left and go over that drill enemy. I've already messed up. So, stay next to the spike there. Ignore this section. In the middle. Whoa, that was close. Oh, maybe that's maybe that's actually faster. And you don't need to stand on there, then. Yes, I'm doing better this time. Right. Ah, I forgot about that spike. So, can I ignore that as well? Yep, go straight there. Okay, I'm getting the hang of it now. Uh, oh no. I don't really have the timing down for that yet. Getting scared then, I didn't know where I was supposed to move. Oh, 
I just realised on the next two videos that I've got coming out on YouTube, I forgot to mention that I have a Twitch channel, so... Uh, yeah, I probably should have said something. I was half considering actually streaming on YouTube itself, but I didn't really want to make the channel messy. I just want the, the channel to be regular videos and have everything else somewhere else entirely, so... I think I made the right choice. It just might take a bit longer to build an audience up. Uh, I don't know what to do there. Where's the best way to go there so I don't get hit by those... explosion things? I'm concentrating now. Right. Okay, so you can ignore him. And go this side. Ah, go that side and spin dash maybe. Whoever's hundred percent at this, well done. You have a lot of patience. Oh, you just memorized it all off my heart. Ah, I really thought that would have killed him then. Twitch has a better game gaming community. Yeah, I guess so. That's kind of what it's known for, isn't it? YouTube gaming really doesn't go anywhere. They tried. I think they're still trying. Um, I know... I don't know why they're struggling to make YouTube gaming like a good platform, because they have... They have everything right for videos, but there's just no thought put into the live stream side of YouTube at all. Like, why not just have a like another part of the website called YouTube Live or something, and have live streams discoverable on there or something? Like, it doesn't make any sense the way they've done it. Like, bundling it all in with ah. Okay, I'm slowly getting a bit further. I can do it. Yeah, so there's a lot of things that I don't understand about YouTube live streaming. And I know a few channels have signed on an, an exclusivity deal to just stream on YouTube, like um, Alpha Gaming, the channel that I watch, or Senpai Gaming, as they've just rebranded. He's now an exclusive YouTube partner. Uh, Ludwig is exclusively on YouTube. I enjoyed his podcast episode that he did with Susan though when he was going through her thoughts about the platform and how she wants to improve it so there is still hope that YouTube can do something to get back a bit but yeah for now I think Twitch is definitely the right place to be for streaming games oh my god I'm not getting any further yeah maybe maybe they took a step back after what happened to Mixer but I don't like the YouTube shorts either, I think they should be on a separate thing. Or at least not show up in the main feed for the channel. Again, there's a lot of things they could have done to make the short videos work a lot better. Oh, yeah, true, VTubers mostly use YouTube. And, yeah, with the with the deals that are coming on with things like Alpha Gaming and Ludwig and... Um, Lily Pichu, I saw earlier today, she's signed a deal with YouTube Gaming as well. So maybe the rest of Offline TV will move over to it and then maybe it'll pick up. Who knows? Maybe they'll get Pokemon next or something. They need to get big names, I guess. Oh, I messed up there. But yeah, some of the money that's uh, flying around with these... Oh my god, I did it! I got an S rank as well! Wow, I didn't even think about going that way. Hmm. It is weird how YouTube is big in Japan, but Twitch isn't, considering they're both American companies. 
but I guess Twitch has Nico Nico, which is kind of where they do their live streams and their YouTube stuff. Okay, so I guess if you're counting as just finishing all the things as 100%, then 100% is Sonic 1. I'm just going to put the fan on as well. Hopefully you can't hear that. Well, I'm a bit sweaty. Okay, time travel 101. Let's see what this one's like. Sonic CD. What do I need to do? Oh, just do both. No. Oh. Okay, let's restart. Yeah, I did it. I don't know how I managed to do that with an S rank. Okay, that was easy. Oh no, I can see some of the challenges in this being being crazy difficult. Okay, ready, go! Oh no. I wonder if that can build up enough speed. No. Hey, I thought it was an A rank, maybe. Oh no, that wasn't S rank. Dun, 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 dun. I'm glad they managed to keep the Sonic CD soundtrack. Yay, S rank. I do find it weird that once you've got your rank, if it's an S rank, it still asks if you want to retry. Like, why would you need to retry? There's nothing better to get on it. Can I be the stage as Mini Sonic? Okay. That'll be interesting. Finally, that pointless gimmick actually has a... has a use. Has a reason for being there. There isn't anything challenging about this thing. Oh. I spoke too soon. Turn around. Oh, I guess I just have to wait for him to go through and then and then go down that hole. Let's try again. I like this this song as well. Bing, bing, bing. Oh, I've messed up every single one of these jumps so far. Yeah, so just wait here. Oh no! I was getting impatient. Let's try that again. Right, I'm going to stream for another 15 minutes, maybe. And then I'll find out about how to raid someone. That'll be good. Nearly two hour session still. I think Sonic 3 on its own is probably the shortest Sonic game then. If it only took me like an hour and a half to finish it. I'm sure Sonic 1 and 2 took longer than that. But hey, hope you had fun watching me play through Sonic 3 anyway. I do really love that game. Even if the levels aren't quite as streamlined as Sonic 2, in my opinion. I think I still prefer Sonic 2 over Sonic 3. But yeah, hopefully you enjoyed watching. I definitely enjoyed playing it. And thanks for coming along, because I never really know what to expect with these streams at this stage. So it's great to know that some people are interested in watching right from the beginning. So I really do appreciate you coming. It makes me feel better about choosing to do them as well. Yeah, another S rank. Oh, thank you, Michael. I appreciate that. Glad you've enjoyed it. Oh, brilliant. 
I'm always worried that I'm not entertaining enough. I'm not like crazy hyper energy like some Twitch streamers are. But I guess there's room for both. Wait, what am I supposed to be doing? Collecting 50 rings. Oh, they're not really in any pattern. Okay, I've got 50. Oh, you need to get 50 and then get to the exit as well. Wow, really? I've got an S rank? That's been a bit lenient. Yeah, I think these early challenges are way too lenient with their S ranks. That should have been like a B at least. I didn't really need to think about that at all. Right, defeat 10 Tagger Taggers, whatever they are. The crab things. Mm, I guess they don't respawn. I'm going to drown now because I didn't get that bubble. Oh, I'm okay. Yeah, there's a lot of them there. I thought that might take me to somewhere good. Oh no! Oh, it's okay, I didn't fall that far. I don't even remember these enemies from the main game. Another cool soundtrack. Oh no. I'm gonna drown. Come on. <gasps> no, I think that's the first time when I've been panicking and haven't actually grabbed a bubble. I get it. Yeah, I'll get a bubble. The bubbles look a bit different in this one. They're a bit shinier. Seven, eight, nine. I need one more. Oh no, come back! I think I've missed my chance now. Ah, uh, okay. Trying to figure out when they attack. I think they just attack straight forward. So if you stay underneath them, then you might be safe. I don't know, they go up. Right. I missed them too now. Oh, come on, go down faster. Yay, there we go. S rank again. Again, probably a bit too lenient. I don't think I did that well. No, I don't want to continue. There's nothing to continue. Twinkle Toes. Wacky workbench. Get 15 rings and reach the goal while the floor constantly shifts. Okay, that sounds interesting. What is this? A Mario, Mario World castle? Oh no. Oh no. Restart. <coughs> okay, now I've got to wait for that one to have a platform on before I jump over to it. And take that B out before it can hurt me. One more ring to get. Okay, now I've got to find my way to the exit, I think. Is it over here? Looks like it should be. Yay, that was pretty easy actually. I quite like that one. I'm doing alright on these actually. I think it's only the last few that are really challenging then. These are two star ones. Clear a stage that has speedier than usual enemies. Okay, that sounds interesting. Whoa, whoa, okay. Really speedy. 
I don't think I need to actually kill them though. Oh, I'm going to restart. I missed that platform. I suppose they're not really that dangerous enemies. They're not ones I need to worry about too much. Oh, I forgot. I don't need to kill the enemies. Oh my god. <laughs> Are you okay? I think he's had uh, too many cans of monster. Too many red balls. I need to stop singing that every time. I do love it though. Easily the best finishing song in any Sonic game. Mercy. Reach the goal without touching any enemies. Okay. Three stars. Oh no! Now, now Sonic knows how the enemies feel when they get killed in one hit. Oh! Hey, that's not fair. I ignored you. You couldn't stab me like that. That's not fair. Ah! I'm not used to playing it like this. Oh my god. Uh, I'm scared. Are there platforms up here I can try and focus on? Oh god, they're all ganging up on me as well. I haven't done anything wrong! Ah, oh, right at the end. Okay, at least it's not a long stage. Da, 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 da. So cool. What's the Japanese one like? I can't remember. I wonder if there's a way of changing the soundtrack for these challenges. I'll do that on the next one. Come on, don't let anything get in the way. Yay! Dun, 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 dun. Okay, that's enough. We're going to see if there's a way of changing the soundtrack. Uh, maybe not. Maybe you have to do it in the game. No. I'll try going into the game because I remember someone said... Or maybe options? Sound. You'd think it'd be in sound, but no. No, not there. Maybe it's in Sonic CD. Uh, what will that do? Oh, I don't want to go back here again. Uh, main menu? Title screen? I think main menu is too far. See if we can figure this out, because I do want to hear the Japanese soundtrack. Title screen. I think it was an option here on the title screen. Uh, settings? Soundtrack has its own option. Change that to JP. Well, it already sounds weird having that as a soundtrack. And then if we exit that and then go back into the... I think I've got all the DLC. I bought the... Whatever the special version was with all the DLC stuff. I don't really know what it got me though. But anyway, let's go back to mission mode and see whether that gave us the new soundtrack. Realty. Timely technique. Defeat an enemy every 10 seconds. Okay, that's an interesting one. Hey, yeah, it did. Or at least I haven't heard this song. Oh, that's cool. And it's got a timer as well, so you need to make sure you keep it up. Oh no. Oh, it even has like a warning song if, you, if you're not killing things fast enough. That's a really cool idea. A bit easy though. Hopefully there's a more difficult one. Oh. Okay, I don't like that. At least I'm not going to go crazy every time I finish the stage now. I'll just do it in my head. Dun, 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 dun. Take to the air. Fly to get 50 rings and reach the goal. Palm tree panic. Oh yeah! I remember this music's really different. A lot of people prefer this over the American one. 
I'm not sure. I'm used to the American soundtrack, so that's what I know. That's what I know and love. I wonder why there's two completely different soundtracks for the game. I've never really looked into why that is. Does anyone know? Anyone who's watching? Do you know why there's two different versions of Sonic CD? Maybe it's just Sega of Japan being weird and not wanting America to use its music. Again, really easy. Yeah, I like that tune. But I don't like the ending tune. I like the beginning to Palm Tree Panic as well, where you've got the kids going, yeah, and they go, dun, 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 dun. I don't know what I picked up then, future or past. I think it changed. Maybe I'll play through Sonic CD again at some point with the Japanese soundtrack. Because I haven't heard uh, some of the... Oh, really? That's easy then. I can just stay here and do it again. Huh! What was the point of building a level? I didn't need to move. Hey, got a new follower. Smethix. Wait, what am I supposed to do? Maybe I did it wrong. I heard one of the Nest Castlevanias also has a different soundtrack from the Japanese one. Um, you're half right. It's not the fact that it's got a different soundtrack. It's the fact that the Japanese one has extra sound channels. So it sounds different. Um, because it has an extra FM sound channel built into the cartridge. Um, and I, I do actually have that version. I picked it up in Japan, actually. It's Castlevania 3. And the percussion's a lot stronger in it as well, so it's really cool playing it that way. Uh, I know what I did wrong. I didn't actually go to the future. I went to the past and then back again. So I should actually start by... Should actually start by doing the future one. Oh no, I lost it. Famicom Disk System games usually add way nicer music. Yeah, even Zelda does, which a lot of people don't know about. So, yeah, really interesting system. I've got a Famicom Disk System, but unfortunately the... Um, the tray thing, what, what's it called? The reel that reads the discs needs replacing. So unfortunately, uh, I can't really use it to play anything. I've got a few games for it but I can't really use it at the minute, unfortunately. Which is really sad, because I picked up some really interesting games while I was in Japan, like Octoki, which is one of the first ever rhythm games, which I really want to try out for the system. But yeah, I would love to get, I would love to get Famicom Disk System versions of some NES games that I know off by heart, just to see the difference. Yeah, the Zelda games sound really cool. Uh, Castlevania sounds really cool. Um, there was things like Ninja Gaiden and stuff, I think, which have extra sound channels. Contra. Oh. I'm not doing very well on this one. Oh, I just realised I said I was going to stop at 11. I'll finish this one, and, uh, and then I'll stop. Metroid as well, yeah. I guess it doesn't matter which one I use now. Maybe I can just come back there and use use the future ones twice. Yeah, I think Zelda 2 as well. That's another one. But I'm not sure what else. There's probably loads of examples of games that have different soundtracks on the disc system. Oh no, I need to go to the future again now, don't I? That's where I messed up last time. And I managed to get to the. I managed to get to the future okay before. Oh, it's blocked. Hmm, where's the best way to go? I'm probably going too slow now. Yeah, I've lost it. No, I don't want to go to the past. I'm going the wrong way. Well, this is the first one, the first one that I've struggled to get an A rank on. 
I'm just going to have a look around and see what the best plan of action is. I think the best thing to do would be to jump down here and then go back. Yeah. Hmm. Maybe not. What's the best thing to do here? Ah, go this way. Yeah, that'll trigger it. I think I've already done them now. Let's try that again. Oh no. Okay, I remember what to do. Get the future thing. Go up to this spring here. Oh, well that triggers the past first. Maybe I should do the past first and then go down and get that future one. So jump over this flag. Go up there. Get the past one. Do that. And then go straight down. Get the future one. Come back up again. Do it again. If it's still there. Oh, no, it's not there anymore. Okay, it's... Oh, right, yeah. It's right where you want it to be. That's actually easier. And then... And then I was planning to... Come up here. Get that future one. I've got it now. Come down here. Jump back up again. Jump over the past flag. And then full speed. Oh no! It cancelled it. That doesn't count, really. Okay, that doesn't count. Hmm. Uh, come on. Why am I struggling on this one? The other ones, the other ones have been easy. I've got to head to the Winchester. Is there zombies in Sonic as well, though? No? Oh yeah, go straight back up. I remember. Now, how am I going to get this last future one? Where am I going to find the speed to do it? No, I don't want to go to the past. Where can I go? Don't feel like I've got enough of a runway anywhere. Maybe here, if I go this way. Ah, oh, damn it, almost. Okay, let's try again. If I just jump a little bit better there. Oh, why not? Oh, I can do it there. There we go. A rank. I'll take it. No, I can I can do better than that. I can do that as an S rank now and now I know where to go. Let's do that again. I just don't want to stop streaming. <laughs> right. I've got this down now, I know what to do. And then stay here. Go back up. Get a future one. Watch me get all cocky now and then mess it up. Don't travel to the past. Go up here. Let's see if I remember where to go. Okay, that's fine. So, down here. Yes. And then just loop this round. Come on, that's got to be an S rank. I don't think you can possibly do it any faster than that. Yeah, 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 there we go, S rank. I accepted it for five seconds, yes, well now I've got it. And 
that is where I'm going to end the stream. So thank you everyone who turned up for this. I really enjoyed playing this game and join me next Thursday at the same time. Well, hopefully a bit earlier if I manage to get my settings right on Twitch. And for now, I'm going to pass you over to... Let's see if I can figure out how to do this raid channel. Let's pass you over to Pass the Plunger, who is playing an audible advert. Thanks, Twitch. Give it a second. I'll find out what he's playing and then I'll pass you over. Five seconds. Four, three, two, one. He is playing Hybrid Heaven, a game that I've never actually played before. So go and check this out. Thanks for watching and tell him I sent you. All right, bye. Okay, in 10 seconds, apparently.